The zombie is an hypothesis. A hypothesis. An hypothesis. The zombie horde is a picture of what humanity might be in a disenchanted world. A world without any transcendence. C.S. Lewis described the modern materialist as someone enclosed in a tiny windowless universe, which he mistakes for the only possible universe. There is no distant horizons, no mysteries. He thinks everything has been settled. There's a bit of dialogue in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader that illustrates the difference between an enchanted and a disenchanted view of reality. In our world, said Eustace, a star is a huge ball of flaming gas. Even in your world, my son, replied the old man, that is not what a star is, but only what it is made of. So is the world enchanted or is it disenchanted? That's the question that the zombies ask us by their very presence. There's a Canadian philosopher named Charles Taylor who wrote a book about the effects of living in a world that you believe to be completely disenchanted, completely material, completely physical. And many people in our culture believe just that. This book is called The Malaise of Modernity. This malaise of modernity refers to a sense of unease, alienation, or disconnection that many people experience in the world today. It is ultimately a result of accepting materialism. Everything is just stuff, including ourselves. So we are sealed off from mystery, from the spiritual, and from the significance that those things give us. Zombies then offer a hyperbolic representation of humanity if we are nothing more than stuff. So they are a picture of people suffering from this malaise. So here are some of the symptoms of the zombie malaise. Alienation and isolation from others, including a lack of social connection or a sense of belonging to a community or group. Disorientation or confusion about what you believe or value. A sense of meaninglessness or purposelessness in life. Anxiety or depression related to feelings of helplessness. And a sense of fragmentation or disintegration. There are various ways in which people suffering from the modern or zombie malaise attempt to mitigate its effects. Accumulating material possessions, escapism, social media, individualism, and special days or events. I once had my hair cut by a woman who loved Halloween. All around the mirror were pictures of her past Halloween costumes, and she couldn't stop talking about the costume that she was going to wear for the next Halloween. It was July. Professional sports also function as an antidote to the zombie malaise. Don't get me wrong, I love NFL football, but I had no idea. Until I was on a flight out of Omaha once and it was autumn, the airport in Omaha and my flight to Minneapolis-St. Paul were packed with pilgrims making their way to NFL cities for Sunday's games. The exuberance that you see in the stadiums on Sunday was already building on Friday in the airport. There are many more examples. Just look for big events with pageantry and spectacle. Look for large groups of people coming around a cause, all looking for ways of transcending their material lives. These things can provide a temporary relief from the malaise. But the flatness of life can only be eased by these things. It cannot be cured. They cannot ultimately give us meanings for our existence. But things are not hopeless. There is a cure. The cure for the zombie malaise is recovering an enchanted view of the world. We need to come to see the world as filled with magic and mystery. Children have this view. That's why you never see zombie children. Well, or at least very few. They see transcendence as a very real presence in the world. There are no ordinary things and there are no ordinary people. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote his books in part to bring about a recovery, to bring about a restoration of our ability to see ordinary things with childlike wonder, or a rediscovery of wonder, and a delight in the other. We will be cured when we see that nature is being lit up by a light from beyond nature. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.